so welcome to my presentation of NMF, a classical comparison to PCA. My name is Griffin Johnson. My other team members were Andrew Keshishian and Quinn Pullman. This slide gives you a quick overview of what each of us did because we are submitting these videos individually. I wanted to break down what I did separately from them. Uh, so Andrew was kind of in charge of the data pre-processing. NMF needs positive data, so making sure all our data sets that we did test with were positive was a big part of that. Quinn was kind of the mastermind behind the math of the algorithm and kind of spearheaded the implementation for us. And what I did was comparing to PCA using correlation tests, and I also compared approximation of NMF with scikit-learns NMF. So the first thing I want to touch on is what I'm going to be talking about. So we're going to be comparing scikit-learn and RNMF at approximating the original data set. And we're also going to be comparing correlations of basis vectors to PCA. So NMF, what it really gives us is it gives us two matrices, W and H, that when multiplied together can approximate our original input matrix, V. W contains our basis vectors and H contains the activations for NMF. W, is compar comparatively, w can be compared to PCA's principal components because they're both basis vectors that can be used to project our original values onto. So when we talk about comparing PCA to NMF, it's pretty straightforward to do that at two dimensions. In this picture, we can see that we have, get, we have gotten two principal components from either NMF or PCA, and we can project the data cluster onto those basis vectors and visualize the data in two dimensions. Well, it becomes hard to compare at higher dimensions. How do we, how do we compare PCA and NMF when we can't simply graph it in two dimensions? Well, what we can use is called a correlation test, or more specifically, we can use a Pearson correlation test. So what the Pearson correlation test does is it divides the covariance by the product of the standard deviations for our given vectors. So in our code, we can take NMFI and PCAI, which are the specific basis vector pairs we want to correlate. And what this correlate function will do is it'll return a value between negative one and one that tells us the correlation between the NMF basis vector and the PCA basis vector. So in this function, we're actually comparing NMF to PCA we are getting a matrix of all the basis vector pairs for each iteration of the dimensionality reduction algorithm. So looking on the right side of the slide, you can see the graph. And this is with an input of 50, which tells us that the input array or the input matrix is going to be 50 by 50. And the graph on the x-axis is showing each iteration of dimensionality reduction and the average correlation value of all basis vectors combined. So what this basically tells us is that the basis vectors for PCA and NMF are completely uncorrelated. The correlation values go up and down, negative and positive, which means the algorithms are completely different in terms of how they're calculating basis vectors to project the original values on. And we can conclude that our, our NMF is very different than PCA. Moving forward, I wanted to investigate the differences between our NMF and scikit-learn's NMF at approximating the original input V. So one of the cool things NMF can do is that you can actually have W and H as your matrices, and these can be smaller in the total size than the original V is. And you can approximate the original V with a smaller dimensional reduction of W and H. So what this means in our function right here is that we can get the W and H matrices from scikit-learn's NMF, and we can also get our W and H matrices from our implementation of NMF, and we can compare those values at each iteration of the dimensionality reduction. So what this function is doing is it's comparing scikit-learn's ability to approximate the original input matrix and our NMF's implementation of approximating the original input matrix. And it's using a mean squared error function from scikit-learn to compare how far off we were at approximating the original input V. I'm also correlating the transformed H values 
uh, for both our scikit-learns implementation and our implementation of NMF. This will tell us a bit how the transform values correlate to each other at each iteration. So looking at the top graph, we can see that at the start of the dimensionality reduction, and this is for a matrix of 100 by 100, at the start of the dimensionality reduction, our basis vectors, or our transformed values, do not correlate, but slowly they actually trend towards zero. Looking at the second graph, we can see that the average mean squared error approximating V trends higher over time, which is obvious, the less data we have, the worse we'll be at approximating the original, the original input. But you, what you can see is our NMF in the orange line closely follows scikit-learn's NMF, which makes sense because the, the core math behind this algorithm is very straightforward. Scikit-learn might have some other optimizations. You can see in the function to call scikit-learn's NMF, we give it a beta loss value and a solver value, which just basically means they have other parameters to optimize NMF for specific use cases, maybe approximation, something like that. So basically this is what we did. We compared scikit-learn's NMF to our NMF at approximating. We also compared the correlation values with the basis vectors for PCA. And yeah, uh, stay safe out there and Thanks for a great quarter.